Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Just because he lives. Let's lift our voices. Ready? God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He lived and died. To buy my bow for prayer. Our Father, we want to thank you how you love us. You care for us. You're always close to us, God, and you bring this church together because you love this church. I pray as you speak to us, God, that we will receive a word from you and that we'll be prepared to take that into this world and we'll leave your fingerprint. These people will know Jesus and they would take Jesus into this world and touch those who have never met you. Thank you, God, that you trust us and now we give you this time. In Christ's name we pray, amen. You may be seated. We want to welcome you, and we're so glad that you've come to worship with us today. And you're very precious to God. He's brought you here for a purpose because he cares about you. And he wants you to hear a word from him as our pastor speaks in a few moments. But he loves to hear you as you praise the Lord. And I want you to know that. I want you to know that God loves you, cares about you, and has brought you here, brings joy to him. But as we sing praise to God, we're also aware that those around us, there are many around us who visit with us, and some people do not know Christ. And you'll be in prayer for those. We want to welcome our guests with us this morning. And I've met some of you already. Some have driven all the way from Australia, sitting right in the back back here. That's a long ways to drive. And we're thankful that you're here and there are others here visiting with us. If you're a visitor with us today for the first time, we'd like for you to fill out this portion of your program. Fill that out and just tear it out and drop it into the offering plate when it's passed by in a few moments. Share with us your prayer requests and share with us your joys and your victories in your life so we can pray with you this week and join you as God is working in your life as well. We're going to ask you to stand and welcome each other, but as you stand, children, if you'll come to the front, I'm going to speak to you.
seated. Boy, what a great time to be together. And Come here. This is God's favorite people, you know that? They're a lot prettier than you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is my favorite book, this right here, God's Word, the Bible. You know why? Because I read this book, I was reading last night, Sometimes I have problems in my life and wars, you know, in my life. There's difficulties and things aren't going so good at times. And sometimes I, I'm afraid and sometimes I'm worried. And I read this book, God's Word, and it tells me things about Him. You know, it tells me what He loves me and He cares about me and that He will protect me. There's a favorite story in the Bible. It's a story that the disciples... in that story that Jesus is in the, uh, the boat, and as he's in the boat with the disciples, he's asleep, and they get in the middle of a storm, and the disciples become afraid. They're scared of the storm. Have you ever been afraid at night or during a storm or something like that? I have. And so they were afraid, and they began to talk to, to each other, and they couldn't understand, huh? Sometimes you're afraid? I am too. Yeah, and then I want to turn the lights on and everything. Do you ever do that? Yeah. When I was a little boy, I used to think there was a tiger underneath my bed. It was going to get me, but if I slept right in the center of the bed, he couldn't reach me. So I would lay right in the middle of the bed, you know, at night. But I'll tell you that story sometimes. My mama used to laugh at me. I do strange things. I'm ADD, you know, and ADHD and all that stuff, yeah. And so what happened is, is that they woke Jesus up and they said to Jesus, they said, what is wrong? You're asleep. And look at this storm. It's going, to, it's going to hurt us. And Jesus said, why do you not have faith? And he made the storm be real quiet and everything got real nice. And Jesus was telling us that story that when you have fear and when things aren't so good, if you just call on him, he says he'll take the storm away and he'll make things better because he loves you very much. You're very precious. You need to know that, okay? So next time you're afraid, you tell Jesus, okay? You and him are more than anybody else. You're bigger. Let's pray. God, what a wonderful thing here. And we love these children and how precious they are. Thank you, God, and let them know that you love them and they will be safe in your hand and you will teach them to be strong and courageous. Bless this church in Christ's name. Amen. Thank y'all. Go take care of your parents. Let's stand together as we sing, We Fall Down. Here we go. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of his mercy and love at the feet of Jesus, and we cry.
Will you pray with me, please? Uh, well, just a moment, we have a, uh, our uh, missionary this morning that we want to remember during our missionary moment is uh, Joe Ragman, and he is the uh, <clears throat> leader of the Greater Detroit Baptist Association in Michigan, and he leads uh, 48 churches, 13 missions, 16 Bible study fellowships, and <clears throat> his prayer is that uh, your faithfulness will help him and his wife, Margaret, to establish uh, churches in that particular area. So let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Father, we are grateful for this day, the day that you've allowed us to come into your presence. We come with hearts set on worship this morning. We come determined to praise you because of your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. The love that you have for us, that you've shown in your son, Jesus Christ, and the redemptive price that he paid on Calvary that we uh, can know that we have eternal life because of him. We thank you, Lord, that you do not look upon our faithfulness and upon our capability to live a life that is pleasing to you, but you look upon the blood that Jesus Christ shed as it has been applied to our souls. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you so very much. And we just pray, Lord, that uh, you would be with us this day in this service, that you would speak through your messenger to our hearts. Help us to receive the message joyfully this morning and help us to make the proper application to our own lives that we might use that which we've learned to be faithful, to serve you, to honor you all the days of our lives. And Father, we would remember the missionaries that uh, you have placed on missionary fields throughout the world. Lord, you've placed them in a the position where you want their message to be uh, broadcast. And we just pray that uh, they would be faithful this morning in that service to you, that they would plant seeds that will grow, that will result in growing into a great harvest for you, that many will come into your kingdom. We pray this morning especially for Joe and Margaret Ragman and the work that they're doing there in Michigan. We ask your blessings upon them, that you would strengthen them, that you would give them the resources that they need in order to accomplish the task that you've set before them. We pray for the offering that we will receive now for each one that is worshiping you this morning through the giving of tithes and offerings, that you would bless the heart of each, that you would meet the needs of each, and that uh, you would receive honor and glory. We pray that you will take this offering these tithes, multiply them as you did the loaves and fishes. Use them greatly to bring souls into your kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' blessed and holy name. Amen.
Lift your voices to him. Ready? He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Now join me in prayer. Father, we come to you today with hearts overflowing with love and praise to you because you have given us a statement of faith that is not just a series of propositions, but a person, the God Son, Son of Man, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you that this church affirms our statement of faith bound up in the Galilean preacher who died on the cross and who rose from the grave. Thank you that we can take a look at a Bible passage that focuses squarely on the need for each of us to be ambassadors representing your kingdom to a lost world. Help us to be able to see ourselves in this Bible text. Help me to do justice to it so that we can do exactly that. So that at the conclusion of this sermon, in the invitation time, that people will respond by faith in Christ, in whose name I pray. 
Amen. Now please open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, and I'll begin reading in verse 19 in just a second. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19. If you've been with us over the course of these last several Sunday mornings, you know that some time ago I started with Ephesians 5, verse 21, and we spoke about, we talked about the family from what the Apostle Paul had to say to us. And then going from there, as we try to practice mutual submission, the Apostle Paul taught us how to put on the full armor of God so that we may be able to live out the values that he's laid out for us in family life and in our communities and around the world. And now we come to this Bible text in which the Apostle Paul makes an unusual request, one that uh, speaks of his need, but also one that speaks of the needs of all of us as we uh, follow in his footsteps, if you will, as ambassadors for Christ in the world in which we live. Ephesians chapter 6, and I call attention now to verse 19 and verse 20, where the Apostle Paul wrote, And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in proclaiming it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Look with me in verse 19 where the Apostle Paul basically says, now we want you to pray for one another. You can see that in verse 18. And now he moves to verse 19 and he asks this request, Would you please pray for me too? You don't find the Apostle Paul asking for prayer for him a great deal. He usually asks for people to pray for one another, pray for God to open doors, pray for lots of opportunities to be given. But we come to this very unique place in which the Apostle Paul is wrapping up his letter. And what he's about to say to us is not necessarily unique because of the organization of these two verses because as we will see, the organization is not so much uh, uh, progressive in thought as he's just dropping a request into the laps of God's people for himself. Now, to figure out the Apostle Paul's earnest desire for people to pray for him in order for us to get our arms around the seriousness of that request, I call attention to what he had to say in verse 20. Now, remember, verse 19, verse 20, not necessarily laid out in an organizational way so that we can track it uh, phrase by phrase, line by line. But in these two verses, we pick up on Paul's uh, request and the reason for it, and we draw some inferences for you and me as we serve today in the same way. In verse 20, the apostle Paul said about himself that he was an ambassador. Now, when we think of the word ambassador, we think about the United Nations, We think about people who gather from all over the world in the United Nations building, and they work through diplomatic efforts to try to strengthen relationships with one another, try to resolve problems so that world wars will not uh, be the result of conflicts, and a number of other steps that they take together so that they can move ahead. And each of those move ahead together uh, as, as as countries on the same. 